Good morning. This is Bill from out of Europa, Naples on another muggy, miserable Florida Wednesday. The weather reports are going to be the same for a while. They're, you know, we got months of this left. Uh, humidity, like a big curtain that just drapes over you. Mosquitoes in the air the size of sparrows. Miserable, vicious attacking things that come for you at all times. And uh, just this general sense of horrible malaise weather-wise that adds to the other general sense of horrible malaise that we're experiencing nationally at the moment. Uh, I'm not even going to get into it. It's just so depressing. I mean, as if the virus isn't enough, uh, now it's being slowly replaced with the entire country burning to the ground. Wonderful. Wonderful. I'm also very pleased to hear that they've canceled the show Cops. It was the one thing that kept me going when I was on these away trips. Uh, you really can't find anything on commercial TV to watch. Uh, but at least Cops gave you that little bit of, well, I, okay, I get it. Uh, obviously, the cops aren't good people, so they can't be on TV. But still, it was a good show and had been around for a long time. Uh, anyway, today they have given me... <sighs> Today they've given me this Teutonic toaster, this little electric, miserable BMW that I'm supposed to review. And I think this is penance, obviously, uh, for enjoying that V12 Mercedes so much last week and having bought that uh, last year Cadillac Brougham. Uh, not a big fan of that style Cadillac Brougham, even if it was the last of the Mohicans. That's probably a hate crime to say that now. But uh, but anyway, it's, it's, you know, a true full-framed V8 power. Howard Caddy uh, that relies on internal combustion uh, to motivate itself and is just a lovely car to drive. And it came in, you know, I, I might review it. I don't know. It's a bit of a turd, but it's real nice for a turd. So uh, we'll see. Uh, but either way, those two cars have obviously caused this one to come along. And now I have to review it. And this is... <sighs> This is a genre of car that I just don't like. I hate electric cars. And, you know, I know there's people who love them, uh, even people that make sense to me who love them. Uh, but for the most part, oh, God, I don't know. I find the people who drive these things to be unfathomable, just the worst humans on Earth. Uh, basically, three types of people drive these. Uh, hipster ladies... Uh, who want to be cool and, you know, good to the earth, uh, even, well, we'll get into that. Uh, man bun type, you know, semi-successful uh, kids who probably spend their time video gaming and think they're doing something appropriate. And uh, then nerdy serial killers, not your multiple Megs type, you know, from, from Silence of the Lambs, the one who flings... Uh, stuff on nice ladies and chops people up and all that, but sort of your hyper-technical, mild-mannered, ultra-waspish serial killer that has a basement full of torture devices and, uh, you know, also likes to chart his gas mileage. Th those are the three people who basically own these things, and uh, none of them uh, are people that I want to spend too much time with. Uh, I do have a couple of friends who would be into this, uh, both of whom ostensibly are internal combustion types. Andrew, Audi Europa Service, uh, a very nice, actually he's not, he's a complete jerk, uh, but uh, you know, 400 pound guy with an attitude, a sarcastic, evil, mean-spirited, and uh, he leased one of these for a while and really enjoyed it. And then of course the guy who was my mentor in the car world, uh, was engaged to my sister at one point, uh, Life, uh, he drives uh, whatever little shitty weird things he can, and he's enamored of a electric cars. If you gave him a little moon buggy like this, he'd be the happiest guy on earth. Uh, he thinks the Prius was the greatest thing since sliced bread. And again, that's a guy who got me into like 427 Corvettes and, you know, top fuel dragsters and Formula One and that sort of stuff. So really is quite devastating. Uh, so BMW came out with this. It's a new I line of cars. They weren't quite separate from BMW, even if that's the way they had planned it. They were going to have their own dealerships and stuff. And it was an all-new way for BMW to use all their skills and history and methods to build a really, really uninspiring and boring car that just looks ridiculous. I mean, the front of this thing looks like an angry chipmunk wearing glasses. Uh, it's just unappealing. You think it's got these big fog lights, but it doesn't. Those big fog lights are actually the high beams. That's how dumb this car... Oh, God. I, I mean, I should beat it up. There's probably people who might want to buy this. And 
and Marty's going to be mad if I take it apart too much. But I can't help myself. I mean, I just hate it. I just hate it. I did not like the whole electric car thing. Uh, it's got these rakish little BMW headlights that are devoid of the angel eyes that make BMWs uh, distinctive. It's got sort of a weird kidney grill that isn't a grill, and it's trimmed in that uh, the blue color that uh, the little electric cars are supposed to have to broadcast to people that you're somebody who cares about stuff, and you're probably going to be really tedious to have a conversation with. Thank God for that blue color for that reason. Uh, you know, the side of the car is not bad, although I find it a little bit too stout, uh, too tall, and uh, just overall silly. Uh, now, when they did design this thing, they came out with a whole new way of building cars. I feel like throwing up in the back of my throat a little bit when I say that because it's so common. It's like we're all in this together, you know, a whole new way of building cars. Anyway, it's, got, it's called a skateboard design, and, and you could call it kind of the modern incarnation of the body on frame thing, like that old Cadillac. It uses two distinct parts. One is the drive platform, which is on the bottom, the skateboard part, if you will, and uh, that is uh, all aluminum for the most part. I think the trailing links and the rear suspension are steel, but that's about it. Uh, the battery, uh, the battery, what is it use D-cells, lantern batteries, they're at the back between the rear wheels, and it's completely separate from the life module. If that's not a word that makes you want to take an AK-47 and, well, anyway, uh, the life module is this carbon fibery plastic thing they bolt on on top and uh, you know oddly that's where you sit so that's the life module and uh, together it just makes this thing that you can drive around and broadcast your good values and sanctimonious behavior to the rest of the world. Uh, now I will say that they did make it nice and light. Uh, as far as these electric vehicles go, the, the i3 is considered to be amongst the most sporty. Obviously Tesla has some other stuff that's, you know, better in terms of sportiness, but when you compare it to like the Leaf or the Prius or that kind of crap, uh, it's probably more sporty than them and handles a little bit better, uh, even if it looks completely ridiculous. Uh, it uses these strange taillights integrated into the rear hatch. There you see the BMW Rondell being exploited right in the middle. Uh, you've got E-Drive, you've got more taillights down low, you've got little bumper sensors. Uh, you see it's gray in color, this car, uh, which is fine. That's the part that changes color. Everything that's black on this car is going to be black on every other i3, whether it's silver or copper, whatever they come with. Uh, from the side, you get the impression that it has these big wheels and tires. Not accurate. Uh, they're basically two-dimensional. Uh, you go to the front and you can see the thing basically is the width of the 10-speed that you had in high school. And of course that's to cut down on rolling resistance uh, so you can extend your battery life. Uh, this one is all electric, although they do come with a range extender version. And I have to tell you right now, if you're one of these sanctimonious West LA types, you better not buy that range extender that has the dinosaur fuel in it. You better not. You better stick to all electric. I don't want to hear about you pumping gas in the thing uh, because you're afraid you got, what do they call that, range paranoia or something. So yeah, stick with the electric and, uh, you know, really live what you're preaching. Uh, it has a weird suicide door set up, almost like my Silverado. Uh, you could almost call this thing an extended cab. And uh, I don't know. Anyway, let's just get into this. Let's get this over with. A little rear wiper. So a little pinch there, and I can lift up the hatch. And uh, there you have the room to put uh, whatever it is people who drive these things are going to need. And I can't even imagine what that is. They're not going to need the, you know, AK-47s and belts of ammo and all the great stuff that I like to have. They're probably going to want to have... Uh, I don't know, what were they, quinoa and kale and fruit salad and the other stuff you're going to get from Whole Foods where you go in and spend triple what you need to do to feed yourself. Uh, they give you this here where you open it up and you think you're going to find something and instead you don't. You find a warning with a suitcase on it saying don't put your suitcase in this two-dimensional area where you might fit a piece of paper because I, I, don't, I don't even know why they need that warning. What the hell do they think you're going to put there? I mean, absolutely nothing. Uh, uh, but uh, anyway, there it is. So you can lift that up for some bizarre reason. It's probably the service entrance to the uh, 
hatch. Now they do give you these nice little baby retainers. I don't know if you're going to fit a toddler in there, maybe just their head, but uh, you could uh, stick a baby in, in each side and then you're in pretty good shape as far as them not rolling around in the back. Uh, we also have a little power outlet there if you need to charge up a little 12 volt mobile or something to keep the babies entertained. Uh, obviously those seats do fold down and then you could put more cargo in there. You could do even more shopping at Whole Foods or uh, you know Ikea or whatever little trendy crappy creepy place you go to. Uh, actually I like Ikea. Nothing like a good horse meatball. Uh, let's have a look under the hood. The hood, the frunk. These little plasticky panels. Uh, the top of it, Marty. Look at you, gun. This is your kind of car, Marty. This is your. This is definitely the kind of thing. I mean, if it is small and embarrassing and it makes people question your masculinity, then you're going to be all over it. And uh, I think that's. Uh, that's very telling. Uh, anyway, it's got this little pouch in the front like a marsupial. Uh, this is where we fit the charger. It's got tow hooks, tire inflators, extra lug bolts if you have to change the tire. Why, I don't know, because I actually don't think it has a spare, so I have no idea what the hell that's doing there. Uh, but anyway, it, it gives you this little frunk, which is not watertight, so uh, you probably don't want to put your kids in there unless they need a bath and, uh, you know, you're going to go through the rain. Fantastic detail job from our guy. Makes me love him more and more. I mean, why bother wiping down the jams, you know? I mean, nobody sees them when the, when the thing's closed, so why bother? And uh, why bother lifting a wiper to clean underneath? I mean, what... That <laughs> would require at least an extra 19 seconds of labor before you could get back on your phone and start playing some mindless video game. Uh, but uh, anyway, we'll have a talk about that later. Uh, this body, again, is all this mix of plastic and carbon fiber, uh, part of what makes this car prohibitively expensive for what it is. And, uh, you know, anyway, it's all nice and tight and under there, whatever it is. Uh, let's not forget, there's the bastardized BMW run down on this thing. Uh, often accused of being a spinning propeller, but is in fact just the Bavarian flag. And frankly, I thought the Bavarians were a lot more macho than this car. <sighs> All right, so we can open up the door here and we're gonna see this sort of uh, Danish moderny ultra-European, and I mean, what really have the Danish ever given us except for some cheese and pornography? I mean, it's, it's, it's just the style is, it's meant to appeal to people who think this is what they should be in. Uh, it does use all these carbon, I, I kind of like this. I have to secretly admit, it's got little carbon fiber bits everywhere over that stupid blue color that again denotes electricity. And, uh, you know, it's fine. Plasticky carbon fiber. Apparently these door panels are made out of hemp, which is obviously what the people who designed it were smoking to extended quantities and, you know, getting their man buns all in a tither. Uh, then it uses some sort of sustainable, uh, fair-sourced fabrics and leathers. You know what that means, basically? When, when BMW says that this uses sustainable and fairly sourced things, it means that your car is a death machine. Obviously, your manufacturer is sending out death squads to third-world countries to beat people into submission. They're probably running arms to different tribes in hopes of getting the stuff for less. And uh, you know, But in fact, these things, I mean, what are they running? on batteries. Well, where does the battery stuff come from? First of all, the, the batteries are getting charged by coal power plants. Let's not forget that. And uh, secondly, uh, they're paying these little Chinese kids six sesame seeds a week to go down into the lithium mines and come up with noxious chemicals and diseases to make sure that these sanctimonious people have their electric cars that don't perform very well. Anyway, oh God, oh God. <sighs> Anyway, uh, it uses the suicide door thing. You actually do have a ton. It reminds me of a smart car in the sense that this little tiny thing outside, but it is pretty roomy inside. And uh, in the front, you do have a nice amount of room. Uh, in the back, eh, whatever. Your Canadians are going to be happy and sanctimonious back there. Feel like, you know, if they complain at all, just tell them you're saving the friggin' earth and they should shut the, shut up. They should just shut up and suck it up and keep saving the earth with you. Uh, these strange panels that cover uh, zero gun storage in there, just more hempy stuff and bits of fabric that probably came from... I'm not, I'm 
anyway, no transmission hump because the thing's basically rear-engined and uh, that gives you more uh, foot room and leg room. Uh, even these seat frames are this sort of plasticky, carbon fibery crap that uh, makes everything light. Anyway, let's just get in. Now here's the thing that really made me joyous this morning, is when I cranked this up to move it out here, uh, the airbag light was on. And uh, that's because I had a little slit, somebody's key slit one of the uh, panels in the seat, so I had that fixed. And uh, to fix it, the trim shop pulls the seat out. When they pull the seat out, bam, off goes the airbag light. Well, that was last week. Wouldn't it be nice if somebody, Marty, who drove the car all weekend, because he's a nitwit, and Dalton, who detailed the car. Wouldn't it be nice if, hey, Bill, you know, the airbag light's on in that car. It's on. Airbag light's on. Why, why don't you have it shut off before you do the photos of the video? Just have it shut down. Uh, you know, that way it won't be ridiculous when you're firing it up and you're going to have to explain away and apologize for an airbag light. But, you know, when your head is halfway up your rear end, you don't think of things like that. Uh, anyway, let's fire it up. So to do that, foot on the brake, start, stop, all those screens come into life. It has a steering wheel with an exclamation point. I'm sure that means something. Sorry, I'm a little crabby today. You know, I did have a great weekend racing in Sebring. I will say that. Uh, even though, there it is, look at that restraint system malfunction because this stupid seat was unplugged. Uh, even though I have to abandon my team, we have this little team of people. It's basically me, Al, Life, and uh, Richard Collins. And, you know, it's a great little team when everyone shows up. <clears throat> when nobody shows up, it's stupid. It makes me want to go join one of the opposing teams. So Al never went because his wife was a afraid of their bike store and wanted her husband to confront armed protesters. I think that's brilliant. That's a brilliant. You want to keep your husband safe, send him out with a shotgun to confront protesters. That's going to work really, really well. Up his life insurance, for God's sake. Uh, Chris, he came for one day, then went home early because his child had a stomach ache. A stomach ache, as if the wife and grandmother can't handle that. I mean, are you kidding me? What is he, a doctor? Is he going to go home and have one of those little rubber triangle hammers and test his reflexes? Uh, life explained that Chris was just going home to drink and smoke copious amounts of intoxicants, which is probably exactly what happened. I mean, if he was really sad over the child, he probably wouldn't have spent the day smoking and drinking, but he did manage to do that. So, uh, so Chris and Al bailed. Then Richard, uh, went out, tried to make it happen, got an oil leak, and then left in a fit of depression, taking his air-conditioned trailer with him, so we had to change in a moist field uh, into our horrible wet track suit. So anyway, I just all these people, they failed me. They failed me, again. And uh, that means that I'm going to have to join one of the other race teams out there. I can't take it. And and the only thing I have to look forward to now is uh, the, the transsexual at the other dealership has now bought a spec car. So she'll be coming to the races, and that surely will up our stature uh, amongst all the other race teams. Very nice girl. Great mechanic. But, uh, but I don't know. I just don't know if it's going to work in the racing format. Anyway, nobody wants to hear this. Back to the car. So here we've got these two screens uh, with our airbag light on. Uh, it tells you we've got 26,000 miles on the car. Uh, the trip that they last took was 6,300 miles. Obviously, that hasn't been reset because uh, it can go about like 0.1% of that on a charge. Uh, you've got your charge meter at the bottom. We're down to 66 miles. I think I'll do about 80-ish uh, with the uh, the equipment on and the normal, uh, you know, charge. Uh, you've got your BMW automatic headlights over here. Nice stuff. Nice stuff. You've got your high beams. Uh, you've got uh, some sort of fancy Distronic cruise control in this car. You've got more. I want to peel this off, this blue. I feel like it's that little protective coating uh, that's going around the, you know, aluminum to make it uh, not get scratched before you get it. And it just won't come off. And then you've got that same ridiculous blue in the steering wheel. Uh, the dash, more hemp, more Danish modern, uh, more, you know, vomitorium. Press this button and that, that pops up from the top. You've got a window sticker here, uh, which to me was part of the problem that this car had. 47 grand. 
Okay, I mean, you could buy like a, a fifteen thousand dollar Corolla and have a lot of money left over for gas, and uh, no little poor kids are going to be mining lithium and getting themselves, uh, you know, tumors on their eyebrows from doing it. So, uh, I have a hard time seeing paying fifty grand for one of these things, the ultimate driving machine, my ass. Uh, not to mention the absolute most. I mean, this looks like, you know, if you gave this owner's manual pack to a nine-year-old girl, she would say, this is just too feminine, it's too girly, it's too ridiculous, I'm a little embarrassed to have it. I mean, seriously, look at this thing. It looks like the notebook Marty probably carried to junior high. <clears throat> but anyway, there it is. Get that back down. Oh, God. Stick it in there. There it is. And of course, all these weird little flying buttresses holding the screen from the side. Uh, it does have BMW's iDrive system. So we've got, I don't know, your navigations, your, uh, you can listen to satellite radio. I don't even know what people who own this. I have serial Candace Springs, Devil in the Real Jazz. That sounds about right. Uh, people who think they need to like jazz, even if they don't, they're going to listen to it anyway. And, um, I don't know, whatever. You can go through all your different stuff uh, and hear your telephones, your Bluetooths, your TikToks, your Instagrams, all the things that little snowflakes need to cheer themselves up. Uh, there's some direct access buttons for it. You've got heated seats. Uh, they put heated seats in electric cars because the idea is you won't turn your heat on and use up more electricity. You're just going to roast your rump and that's going to keep you in good shape. Whatever. Uh, I like the little climate control thing with the display and I, I, it's the one thing I like on this car is that knob. I think that's pretty cool. And uh, it does of course have pretty nice air conditioning. Uh, then you've got your little you know, whatever over there, your instruments for driving your Speedo. Obviously no tack, you wouldn't need that. And uh, I don't know, we got a self-dimming mirror and eh, whatever. And then this shift knob, whatever you have, whatever. I mean, look at this thing. I get it that they want to be different. They want to think outside the box. But how is anybody supposed to intuitively understand how to use this thing? P is for park. So that's how you park. Then you put your foot on the brake and you pull this back to go into reverse. You push it forward to go into drive. Uh, I don't know if it's going to... That's it. So this whole big ridiculous looking knob is just... A shift lever, which I think could have been made a lot more simple. Uh, instead of a camera, you get this sort of backup thing that shows a picture of your very unattractive car as it's moving. Alright, so now what? Are we on the tee box? And now we're going to head towards the sand trap and the fairway and get up to the green and see if we can't get a birdie. So absolutely silent as electric cars are. Uh, very, very irritating. Uh, I would like to have some sort of big block Chevy sound piped in. Uh, BMW heavily uses regenerative brakes to the point of incredible irritation. Other car companies did not bother to do this. I don't know why we're getting fog up here. I probably have this wrong. Set that right. Uh, you'd think it would have a display somewhere telling me, whatever, it doesn't matter. Anyway, so like the Leaf and some of these other cars, uh, they all have regenerative braking, meaning when I let off the uh, accelerator, okay, now it's going to wind up that electric motor and put juice back into the battery. And uh, it, it drives very, very different from a normal car. In fact, it'll come to a complete stop on its own without using the brake pedal. Other car companies wanted people to not feel like they were in a completely different different kind of vehicle so some nice old sanctimonious lady could get in a Prius or a Leaf and you know drive it normally without really realizing that she's in an electric car. BMW did not take that approach. Uh, in fact, uh, oh my god it sounds like the Jetsons or something. It does move, I'll give it credit for that, I mean it's pretty quick. That was only about half throttle and we were going pretty good clip, uh, but uh, it's still, it doesn't have any gears to shift, it doesn't... <sighs> anyway, the regenerative braking, so when you let off the, uh, uh, the gas, it just almost throws your head forward uh, because it's recharging that battery so much. There, I'm nailing it, let's see what that does. You don't have to wait for it to heat up the battery explodes. Uh, but anyway, um, 
Uh, so you can drive this car with one pedal, just your, your gas pedal. When you're on it, you're driving fine. Uh, watch the speedometer go down when I let off. I'm at 58, I'm now off. Bam, five, three, one, 49, 47. I haven't touched the brakes, and I'm actually feeling a pretty heavy braking uh, as we go. So that's one way BMW recharges the battery as you're driving around, and Nissan was too chicken shit to do that. They wanted people to not feel like they were in a weird car, but uh, obviously BMW is a little more daring in their tediousness. So anyway, that's that. Uh, you can see you've got all your indicators. You've got, you know, eh, the, the air conditioning's not great, but it's okay. I'm sure the heat's fine. And, uh, you know, you can hop in. You can charge this thing overnight, 110. It also has the fast charging option if you want to hook that up at home. That'll charge it up a little bit faster. Uh, I'm sure every store that the people who own these will frequent will have charging devices for you so you can feel really good about plugging it in you know try to get a cough and you know clear your throat try to get people noticing you plugging your car in and uh, you can drive it as a daily thing certainly wouldn't recommend taking these things on trips unless you're going for a trip to the next county over because uh, that's about as far as you're going to get without recharging Anyway, as you can tell, I'm in love with this thing, and uh, it is for sale on our lot, uh, Audi Europa. If you have any interest, Marty's very excited about it. Give him a call. Uh, talk to him about it. He'll find it to be thrilling. You can, you know, discuss how you're going to vote in the next election and, uh, you know, whatever else is going on in the world today. Uh, I really appreciate you having a look. I'm going to try to come up with another one this week. I do have some stuff hanging around. Hopefully something that I can get a little bit more excited about and uh, not be mildly negative the way that I was on this car. Uh, thank you so much for having a look. We really appreciate it. And we will see you with the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.